What's up everyone, this is Brian, and I wanted to do a little bit of a different video than I've normally done. So I'm actually doing some poking around while I'm here in Missouri. Sorry for all the noise, the interstate's right there. Uh, but I'm kind of poking along some uh, businesses uh, near where I'm at here that are along what, what, uh, what once used to be uh, Route 66. And the first place that I had to stop at, which is the closest to where I'm staying, is actually Uranus. All right, and here is Uranus, which is near uh, St. Roberts, Missouri, or I think it's technically, I think it technically is Uranus, Missouri. Um, and this is a newer-ish establishment. It's been around for about five years or so. Um, fun story about this place, it did not used to be this establishment. Uh, some of these storefronts and stuff were here. There used to be a uh, chicken bones, uh, kind of like a bar and restaurant that was here. It was kind of a rowdy place. I'd been there before. Um, and there used to be uh, an adult establishment that was here as well um, that sold things as well as offered live performances, if you will. And But it's been several years that they decided to uh, reconfigure the business into this venture. And uh, you can even kind of tell there's some remnants of the drama left over here from when the business was here and the fact that local residents didn't like that there was that type of establishment in such a small town and, you know, what's kind of somewhat the... The Bible Belt. So now this has been turned into uh, basically a highway stop, but it's actually pretty cool. Um, it's you know called the Uranus Fudge Factory. You can see where the pun is there. They've got the general store. They're doing some remodeling where they, they are going to be adding a restaurant back. It's just going to be a little bit different thing. They've got like a sideshow museum thing with you know different circus acts and things like different circus gimmicks and things like that. And they've got like a little kids area. So we'll kind of walk over there and check that out. First thing is. Uh, this, uh, I believe this is actually an RV of some kind. It says it's the Astro Liner, but from looking at it, there's actually little AC units on the top of it. And as we come around to the back, it even looks like it's got a little jet propulsion. So I'm not sure what the story or the history is on this thing. Other than the fact that I am fairly certain that this has been converted. Yeah, I'd be willing to bet this has been converted into a, some sort of a motorhome, which is kind of neat. I don't think it's in use for that anymore, or maybe it was some sort of a amusement park ride or something like that. Because um, I'm kind of looking at it, it looks like it's got all these different, uh... oh yeah, maybe this thing turns. Look at these wheels right here. So it looks like this thing rotates on that. There's some bearings right there. They look like they're a little out of shape there. So I definitely don't think it's been used in a while. It definitely looks like it was like a circus attraction or, or county fair thing. Cause use all the little gates for ushering people in. Maybe you sit in there and it spins around. Either way, it's kind of cool. Uh, definitely something you're gonna see from the road. And for this only being here a few years, they've really got a collection of just kind of cool old stuff here. I'm not sure how original some of this stuff is, um, but there's definitely some cool things. Here's an old uh, oil truck. You know, Phillips 66 is kind of what they're going for here. And then they've got this little section over here, which I'll point out here in a second. So this is the Sideshow Museum. Having to yell over this. They've got a gift shop and everything in there. They've got all this like crazy circus looking stuff out here. I, I did not actually go into the museum because I don't have enough time for it. But they have an escape room that's here now. You can see the puns kind of continue. You can get stuck in Uranus or lost in Uranus or whatever. 
They've got a tattoo parlor, which uh, is a legit establishment. It's just not open right now. And then you've got the section down here. All right, so I think this is neat down here. Now it's uh, you know pretty much the beginning of February and it's a Monday. Um, so obviously everything down here is, is pretty much closed. But I can imagine during the summer months or around special holidays, this place is open. This is uh, kind of got ice cream and funnel cakes, uh, including a little seating area here, which is pretty cool. You can see they've got a stage for live music. Uh, plenty of space back here. Pretty well done. I like, I like the way it's set up. Got these hoods that have had stuff you know, art stuff painted on them, or maybe it is original. It's, it's kind of hard to tell. There's this one here. Walker Crockett's. I mean, I don't know. It looks like it was added at some point later, but either way, I think it's kind of cool. Oh, and here's one of the local attractions here as well. This is Johnson. Johnson lives on the property. Super sweet cat. Apparently he's part of the marketing as well, so you can, uh, you know, come to Uranus and stroke the Johnson here. This is a sweet cat though. I was hanging out with him here earlier. And then they've converted this double-decker bus into like a little lunch or coffee spot or something like that. If you actually look inside, again, it's closed right now as well, but they've actually redone the inside with tables and chairs and, and they've got all kinds of stuff. Uh, it was pretty cool. You can kind of see in there, there's a steering wheel. This looks like it was definitely a functioning bus. I'm sure it's been out of uh, operation for a long time now. But pretty well done. And then they've got like a little food truck over here. And then they've got uh, this little kids play area with of course, you gotta have the hubcaps if you're, you know, Route 66 themed thing. Uh, they've got this cool old fire truck which you can climb around. And then I guess uh, the owner of this place has been taking a lot of um, styling cues from like wall drug and some of those things that are further out in route 66 which is why you've got the massive dinosaurs and stuff i'm not sure where these come from but they definitely look like they have some history to them one final note is where i was just there earlier with the uh, kind of oddities museum they have up there that is actually where the adult establishment used to be and i had been there before and it's kind of weird to see it now as an oddity museum um, I mean, they've totally converted this place over and I like what they've done with it, but it's just kind of crazy to be in there. It's still the same owner, so he just has a new vision for the property. And from what I can tell online and from being here myself, I think they're actually uh, doing a pretty good job. All right, well, before I hop back in the car and head on to my next stop, uh, I'm sure you're probably asking, uh, did I get fudge while I was at Uranus? And the proper answer to that is yes, I actually had my fudge packed for me over here at Uranus. So let's give this a try. I got the uh, dark chocolate one. I'm kind of a dark chocolate guy. Apparently that's kind of one of the ones we're known for. Mmm. That's really good. Taste. Oh yeah. That definitely has like a brownie taste to it. That's really good. Just sitting over here with Johnson eating. Eating my fudge. Say hi kitty. All right, let's head on to the next block. All right, now I am on the uh, kind of second phase of the things I wanted to check out today. Um, I don't know how much time I'm gonna have to see too much stuff, uh, but I am actually currently driving on the old Route 66, and what I can say so far, at least the section that I'm on right now, um, is it's very bumpy, uh, very poorly maintained, uh, but I am actually in the neighborhood or the community of Devil's Elbow and uh, there is the Devil's Elbow Bridge that is over here, um, as well as what used to be, I just drove past it, and uh, is kind of a temporarily closed bar and restaurant. Um, so I guess let's just turn this camera on and I can show you kind of what's going on. All right, here's the sign for Devil's Elbow. I think there might have been something on top of here, maybe a Route 66 sign, but you can see established in 1870 and named after a pad bend in the river. Uh, also known as the Devil of an Elbow, made famous by Historic Route 66. So this is the section where I'm at here, and you can see all up along the road here, there's regular people's houses and stuff. But you can see down there is the Historic Route 66 sign. But I wanted to kind of pull over here before I actually get down to where the bridge is and everything else, because uh, I, I passed by this on the way down 
I don't know if you'll really be able to kind of tell what's going on in the video. It's just a, a depth perception kind of a thing. But uh, down there is an old rail bridge that crosses over the river, and it's really kind of cool. You can see how um, the time has turned that green. From where I can sit here, I mean, it almost looks like it could still be in use. From kind of looking at it, I mean, it doesn't look like it's it's old or dilapidated or anything like that. But it's kind of neat. So we're we're a little higher in elevation right here. A lot of guys on motorcycles and ATVs riding around through here, as you can probably imagine. Although I think those are locals, no helmets or anything like that. But kind of a interesting view down the valley here. All right, I think we are coming around the bend to where the bridge is. Yes. So if you kind of look off in the distance, one thing that's real specific that I, you know, remember about Missouri is having the uh, amount of rock everywhere, and you can just kind of see right here um, all the the rock walls, like kind of on the on the valleys there, on the cuts and everything. Um, it's just kind of a very specific memory I have about the look here. Now we do have what is this right here? The Mother Road. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's a bar that opens up later on, but definitely nothing right now. So here is the bridge crosses over the river as you can see we'll go over go over it together here it is a one-lane bridge no signage or anything like that you can see we've got the river to our right which has a little bit of a green tint to it I think it's because of limestone that's prevalent in the area you can even see out the window here it's like this has been a floodplain or something at some point the way everything's kind of dead and dried out. Yeah, see here's a car trying to come across here. All right, and this here where I'm gonna be pulling over was the Devil's Elbow Inn. And I was actually really kind of bummed that this is closed as I was totally expecting to come here and actually grab food if it were still open. When I was looking things up online, I didn't really see any indication of it being closed. So maybe it's just a short-term thing. But I think, uh, I think I was told that this place is known for having, at least it used to be known for having, I think I had bras hanging from the roof or something. It was kind of like a specific thing for this place. Oh, it looks like another kitty cat. Aw. Kind of an interesting area here. So yeah, that is the uh, Elbow Inn and the Elbow Inn Bridge. I'll probably get a couple more photos and maybe another video of that. Here comes another motorcycle. I've seen a few of them just kind of cruising around the way. This was kind of a neat spot at one point. I'm actually kind of bummed that I didn't get a chance to come here before. Um, so it just means I'll have to pay attention for when they open next time I'm through. All right, so this is just a really quick stop as I'm uh, traveling to my next place, but currently I am in Newburgh, Missouri. It's out in the middle of nowhere. I'm just kind of on some backcountry roads. And when I think of like small town, like Midwest, uh, you know, Americana, this is exactly what comes to mind. And I think this is the kind of small town that a lot of people that have grown up in, in cities, especially big cities, just don't really get. Um, but this town has a population of about 400 people. And it's totally different than what I'm used to with the smaller towns like even North Carolina East Coast. So first I just want to point out these awesome, gorgeous, probably 100 plus year old buildings. I can really just imagine this town not having the, the paved roads and in fact having you know, dirt roads and, and even horses and stuff like that. But as we come around, here's this uh, Lyric Theater, which I don't think is open. There's no like, uh, it's not like a museum or anything like it's really been restored or anything like that. Um, but as we can tell here, uh, it's it's a National Historic uh, Monument or a place. And they're saying it's uh, 100 years old as of 2019. But then this building right here, which, I mean, just looks awesome. It just looks straight out of the Old West. Look at the ornate nature of the on the columns here. Um, and then as we even kind of come up to the roof line here, we've got this really ornate tin that's on the roof. And I have no clue what this is like. Oh, those Florida leaves, a little weird. But I have no clue what this was or what this is going to be. Um, but it's very clear that somebody's doing some remodeling here. You probably can't see inside there, but they've got uh, different work going on. Something that's interesting back here 
which I took a photo of and I decided I can also kind of show here. This is between those two old buildings. I was kind of curious what it looks like behind one of these old 100 plus year old buildings. You can see, A, it's pretty much just built right into the side of the mountain. There it is, it just comes down, there's rock and everything. But you can kind of see inside here where they're redoing this building. So I'm very curious if it's just gonna be like a home or like a restaurant or a hotel or what they're gonna do, but there's nobody out here. But check out this well. This is like an old school traditional well. You can see the water pipes coming out of it. I doubt that I'm really gonna be able to get any light down there to do us any justice, but there's definitely water down there. I mean, I doubt this is in use anymore. There's got a lot of trash and stuff in there, but you can just see this old brickwork here. That's yeah, just really kind of neat. I can just imagine this was like the main source of water back in the day. I mean, you'd say get water from the well. It's literally what it was. See, so the other thing that comes to mind here when I think about, you know, small town America, especially in the Midwest, is just that in all these small towns, it really is a working class. I mean, we're out here in the middle of nowhere, and probably the thing that's got the most money spent on it is this, you know, wide railway. It looks like it's at least three or four tracks wide. Uh, I think it's a cell phone tower, but we've got some guys that are just getting off work over here, um, some sort of alignment or something like that. You've got, you know, working people, you know, actual work, you know, not like working in an office or something like that, but physical labor. You know, you've got the old buildings all over the place but then as you kind of go further and further down the row here um some of these houses are decent and some of these houses are in really bad shape um and they're kind of like boarded up um, but it's, there's still signs of life and there's still signs of people living there um it's definitely just a very um i don't want to say poor or impoverished but it's just it's not the type of neighborhoods that we're all used to and i mean this is like the downtown if you will I mean, this is, I think, a part of society that we just kind of disconnect with from time to time. You know, and I fall victim to this as well. You just kind of forget how good you have it. But here we are in the middle of nowhere. There's no fast food. There's no convenience store. There's like a bar, and that's it down there. And that's I mean, that's real America right there. So as I leave this town here, I just kind of want to drive past and show you some of the stuff that's still left here. So we've got this Houston house. Don't know what that is. It says established 1884, and I believe it. We've got this kind of unmarked gray building here on the corner. Some businesses down there. And we've got, oh, what does that say? Across the tracks, bar and grill for sale. Perry's Pool Hall. That's the only place that looks open and has any kind of activity down here. Look at this. You got like some sort of cafe, Perry's Cafe maybe just a really interesting there's a church right here I mean it's just crazy I wish I could have been here 50 years ago or even a hundred years ago I mean look at this this is this is this is the real small town Missouri City Hall and the public library it's like a hand-painted sign I'm just fascinated by this. There's some nicer homes on the hill. It's just an interesting community dynamic here. Don't get me wrong. I'm not. I'm not trying to make fun of this or put any kind of bad light on it. If anything, I think that you know people just forget what you know the older the older times were like, and I, I, I clearly wasn't there for it. So it's kind of eye opening for me to actually see stuff like this just out in the middle of nowhere fascinating all right so i am in rollo missouri right now i think this is going to be my uh, last stop for anything that i can really video tonight um, but as i was driving actually on to go get dinner uh, i saw something on the side um, and it just really struck my attention and i wanted to kind of show this to y'all look at that all right, and here she is. This is a 1923 Blue Bonnet steam train. Apparently, uh, it was built in 1923 as a set of 30 um, for the, I think it's the St. Louis Express or something like that. Uh, this ran from St. Louis to uh, California, to San Francisco, actually. Apparently, it was decommissioned uh, in the 40s or early 50s, and in 1955, uh, this train as well as the passenger cabin 
was given to uh, Rolla, Missouri for them to put on display. So this thing has been sitting here, albeit not under this nice canopy and stuff, but it's been you know, on display for the town of Rolla, Missouri since 19 freaking 55. So even this train has been sitting here for like what, almost 70 years? That is just insane. It's the 1501. Uh, you know, I wish I could see this thing in the daytime. I imagine it's just awesome to look at. I mean, it's awesome here at night. Um, you just can't even really take in how massive these style trains are until you're actually next to one. So it's got this really awesome, this is just what I think of with uh, like the Polar Express or any of those kind of movies. It honestly even gives me vibes of like Back to the Future 3. Um, and it seems to be in really good shape for being, you know, a hundred year old. I thought it was maybe older than the 20s just with the look of it. But um, apparently, uh, yeah, it's, it's, you know, right at almost a hundred years old. But it's been sitting here for the last half of that. Yeah, St. Louis to San Francisco. I would love to see what the inside. Apparently they do tours. Uh, they've got this fence locked up, but you can kind of schedule tours and they'll kind of open it up and let you inside. They've got little steps and stuff if you want to climb inside and check it out. But obviously you can't do that when the gate is locked. It's just so awesome. I want to say it's like a green color. I mean, it could just be like a black that's faded or at least maybe the, the passenger compartment's green and the front is black, that might make more sense. They've got this old wagon here, which I don't really understand the significance of it. But the main issue, I mean, just look at this. This is, look at all this coal. Apparently it's got an oil furnace, but this was like the coal cart. And it's just so cool. If you can kind of tell, we'll see if I can get it with how dark it is. Yeah, but there's all the different little hand controls and just different dials and things like that inside there. I can barely see it even in the dark also. So freaking huge. It's just insane. Here's a little card on it. I guess I can't turn my flash on while I'm videoing. So yeah, 1953. This is the Frisco Railroad, so they were asking to put these on display. And uh, yeah, we can see we got the 1501 here, uh, and it was on January 25th. So literally, you know, it's like February now, so 1955. That is so cool. It's just so massive. I just love the front end of these things. I mean, it's just, it's got such a mean, like industrial look to it. It's even got the little skirt that comes down here. It's just, I mean, look at this thing. It's just insane. I know there's somebody that's gonna probably geek out about this like me. I'm not even a train guy. I don't know anything about them, but I just think this is really a cool piece of history that's on display here. I mean, just look at how massive these wheels are. I don't know if they are originally painted white, but uh, they are painted white now and they just look so awesome. I mean, just this, this thing just looks so classy and these big pistons right here. I mean, those wheels are about the same height as me and I'm like six feet tall. It's just insane to look at this thing. All the different valves and everything. Must have been crazy a hundred years ago to see these things moving around. I mean, what would you think during that time? All right, well, that's going to do it. Um, I stopped at, I think, what, three places total uh, on just a little day trip excursion here. Um, it was really fun to just kind of drive around kind of the back roads of Missouri. Uh, this is actually the first day that I've ever driven uh, any of Route 66 before. Um, so I can say uh, now that I have, technically, I bought a T-shirt as well. Uh, there was one store that I went to earlier. It was the... Um, the mule something mule store and uh, from what i saw online it's supposed to be this really cool trinket store and unfortunately it's now just kind of like a t-shirt shop and you know they've kind of lost some of the charm since they've had new ownership otherwise i would have shown you some of that um, i'll probably throw a photo in here of that store at least um, but kind of a cool day uh, i'm actually going to go head down into rolla right now and uh, catch some dinner uh, there's a place that's called the tater patch that i've been told to go check out so that's where i'm headed now but in the meantime, here's one more look at this train. So cool. Thanks so much for watching.